Ian here. Today I'm going to show you how to use Flexport to send in an inbound shipping plan. If this video helps you, please take a moment to like it. Follow me. Let's get started. So I use Flexport for my Shopify, eBay, and Etsy shipments. You can also use it for Amazon FBA. What you need to do to set up an inbound shipment to a Flexport fulfillment center is go to Flexport, log in, click on shipping plans, and then press create inbound. You'll be prompted where are you sending your ship, shipping your inventory from international or domestic. In my case, it's domestic for my supplier. So I am going to select my supplier's name. And then the address. Um, it's not a residential location and there's no limited access for freight pickup. Regardless though, uh, even though I can have my supplier actually include it with their daily pickup, I'm going to be dropping it off at a UPS shipping center. I'm going to be picking it up from the supplier and then dropping it off. So I'm going to click next. And the options you're given here are multi-channel fulfillment by Flexport as well as fulfillment by Amazon. I'm not using Amazon FBA. I'm actually going to be, this is for my uh, Shopify and Etsy and eBay order. So I'm going to select that and then select next. Now, uh, this is where it gets a little confusing. This is unlike other sorts of shipping arrangements and third-party logistics that I've used in the past. Um, they have two different types, Flexport Reserve Storage, which basically means I think they keep it in long-term storage. And then as it's needed by FBA or Shopify or Etsy or whatever, um, as you sell more stuff, they'll take it out of the, the reserve storage and then make it available to uh, whatever channel that you happen to be using. I'm just using Flexport DTC, which stands for Directed Consumer Fulfillment Network and then click next. Okay, so I'm actually just shipping individual products, not case packed products, but basically if your supplier has like a box of 30 units every time, you would select case packed products. There are certain restrictions and requirements for Flexport, so make sure that you understand what those are. I'm doing individual products and then uh, search for the product. So this should already be in your Flexport catalog. So mine already is, it was pulled over from Shopify, uh, but because it has a UPC label on it, it basically matches up to all the other marketplaces that I use. So I'm going to start collecting it and see if it comes up. And it's this one. Okay. And one thing also that you should do is you should really make sure that it is the correct item. So what I'm going to do is just to open up, you can see all my shipping is going on here. I'm going to open up the metadata that I have for this particular product. Some people use a spreadsheet. I actually use this um, it's this one right here. So this so what I'm doing here is I have my metadata label and on it I have the uh, the UPC code. So it ends in 198. So I just want to make sure that that's matching up with what they have in Flexport, and indeed it is. It's the same one. There's no battery here. If it did have a battery, I would check off yes. And then the number of units I'm sending in. So it's 10 units. And then click Next. So uh, the packaging for each unit, and if it was depending on what sort of kind of category it's in, you'd select this. In my case, it's none of these. So it, I don't have any sharp stuff. I don't have powder or pellets or granular. And clearly you can see what Flexport's looking for here. They wanna see if it requires special handling once it arrives in the fulfillment center. In my case, it's other, no special packaging. And then I click next. So this is something I really like. Um, Flexport has this option where you can basically have them do the barcoding, bag them, bubble wrap them, bubble mail them. And uh, in the past, for instance, for Amazon, Amazon does have a barcoding service, but they don't offer these other services as far as I know. So if you had an item that required like bubble wrapping, and they give an example, looks like a perfume bottle or something, you could check that off and they charge you uh, 80, cents per, 80 cents per unit. So if you have 10 units, that's $8. I don't need any of this stuff, but I think that's pretty cool that they have that. I don't need it, so I'm just gonna click skip. I don't need prep. Now, basically what it's doing is it's, um, taking the provides scannable barcode labels. So on my particular product, in the design of the packaging, I already incorporated the UPC label that has the barcode on it. So I, you know, this these numbers, this number in particular will match up with um, what's on the packaging itself. So when the Flexport staff at the fulfillment center get, get the items, it will match up with one of these numbers here. 
in my case, it's this one, UPC. So there's uh, there's nothing before it. But if it was, for instance, a, a, a GTIN number or something else, it might have just a 00, zero in front of it. It would, it would use this. Regardless, this is all correct. You can't change them. This is what Flexport's assigning to them. For instance, this Flexport uh, DSKU, this is something that Flexport provides. I have no control over that. I don't care. Uh, but in Flexport systems, this this will be the ID that that they will be using. It doesn't need to be. A, it doesn't need to have this barcode. It just needs to have one of these other barcodes or, or one of these other numbers. So I already have this one. So I'm going to use that one and click next. So you can see it's already chosen the UPC. So I'm good. Now, this is another thing I really like. Uh, Flexport gives you the option of either doing a forwarding plan, and basically you can see how it works. You pack one shipment, you ship to one Flexport cross dock. It's in California, East, West Coast or East Coast, and Flexport forwards your boxes into the fulfillment network. So this is actually the same way that Amazon uh, Seller Central currently works for me in most cases. They have me send it to a one of these cross docks um, uh, fulfillment centers in New Jersey. And then Amazon will send it out to one of the many um, distribution centers, fulfillment centers they have all over the country. Flexport has a similar arrangement, but they also give you the option, which as far as I know, Amazon doesn't really do that, to do a direct plan. You ship it to uh, one or more of the locations. They charge you for that when you do that, but the good thing about it is it only takes two days to get into the system. So if I was in a hurry, I needed to get stuff like into the Flexport shipment and available for sale ASAP, I would do this for sure. Um, but just keep in mind, however, that your shipping costs will rise as well as this extra fee here because you're shipping to, instead of like, um, you know, a single uh, cross dock, you're shipping it maybe to, to, you know, eight or nine or 10 different uh, distribution centers all over the country. So this doesn't work for me now, but I can see how that could be a valuable thing. I'm just going to use the forwarding plan and click submit. So this is uh, an, another place where you have to make some decisions small parcel delivery or freight so this would be a, a pallet or something by the way if you are doing pallets they do flexport does have requirements for that you should look at the flexport help to see what that is i'm just doing boxes basically and then choose your character carrier flexport partner or your carrier this kind of works similar to amazon fba and if you choose this basically uh, flexport will help you find a automatically find a carrier and also give you their discounted rate so in this in the past it's been ups it's giving me really good rates better than i could get it on my own from flexport so i'm just going to take that and then uh, it's asking me for the shipment packages and boxes so you should already have this information ready so it's number of units per box one box, the box weight, I've already prepared that. I've already weighed it, 10. And then the uh, dimensions are 11 by nine by 14. And I'm only sending in one box, so I'm good to go. And then you can do this confirm and estimate cost. So we'll see what it's going to be. So this is actually a really good price. This is uh, $11.10. If I was using my own UPS account for this, it would be uh, more than that, probably be about $20. So this is a really good uh, discounted freight cost. I love it. Let's confirm the charge. And this, by the way, is not pickup at the supplier or you know, if you're using a residential address at your house, it's actually, I'm dropping it off at UPS. Uh, in the case of my supplier, though, if I wanted to do it, you know, my supplier has basically a daily UPS uh, pickup. So I could I could use that if I wanted to. Uh, and then you can download the labels. So I'm going to download the labels. We're generating your labels. It may take a few minutes to complete. I'll wait for this to go away. And by the way, this is actually, there's uh, there's two things here. There's the packing slip, and then there's the external labels that go on the box. And basically, it comes to you as a PDF with two stickers. One of them is a Flexport sticker for their own internal scanning and moving stuff around, and the other one is a UPS sticker. So I'm going to download this. And you can see it gave a weird name here, a weirdly beautiful fish details. And this is automatically assigned and it may not make any sense, you know, what what the heck does weirdly beautiful fish, but it's basically a tool that you can use to kind of remember that particular shipment if you're dealing with lots of shipments at the same time. So later on, I'll open up that particular um, packing slip. And then the other one is the shipment summer, 
uh, summary, finish. And basically, you can see that there's a UPS label here. And what, I, what I'm going to do is I can download that uh, the, this UPS sticker along with the Flexport sticker that goes on the outside of the box. So I'm going to be downloading two PDFs from Flexport. One is the packing slip. The other one is the single sheet of paper, single sheet of uh, sticker paper that basically includes the UPS label and the Flexport uh, sticker that goes on the outside. Of course, there are other requirements for packing stuff in Flexport. Note that it's not the same as other services you may have used in the past, such as Shopify Fulfillment Network or Amazon FBA, but I think they're pretty straightforward and easy to follow. And overall, I pretty much like this Flexport experience. And seriously, I'm considering using Flexport for Amazon FBA in the future because I can see it has some definite advantages uh, to the current system that I use, which I've described in other videos. If this video helped you out, please take a moment to like it and follow me. Also, if you go to uh, leanmedia.org, uh, that is my official website. Click on blog or video. Lots more free advice on how to get the most out of e-commerce platforms and services. This is Ian signing off. Thank you so much for watching.